Oh, just got my roof. Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today I'm back with an Assassin's Crossbow. So this lovely little all steel number here, uh, also called a Balestrino. Now I've done a video on these before, but you know, our methods have changed, the way we approach things have changed. So really I'm just back to revisit this. Now this particular bow, this Assassin's Crossbow, is 200 pounds in draw weight, 90 kilos in draw weight. So it's got some power, we would think. But let's come all the way back to the beginning of the story. Could this be used to assassinate people? Well, in 1545, Venice banned balustrinos. So they banned what we know of as the Assassin's Crossbow. Well, you know, a reasonable thing, one would think. But then in the 17th century, it actually became a capital offence. So to have one of these, you'd get killed for it. But it wasn't just Venice where this was an issue, because in Elizabeth the first time, two conspirators, Richard Williams, Edmund York, were talking about poisoning her using a small steel crossbow like this. I'll put the quote in the notes. Now, the question is, did they refer to the bow being steel or the whole thing being steel? We don't really know. Without a doubt, these two gentlemen talked about assassinating Elizabeth with a crossbow of steel. Was this the sort of thing that they were talking about? Were they full of bluster and hot air, or had they really used one of these things, or had they just heard about it? So the first question has to be for us. Can it, could it kill? Could you use this for assassinating people? So we're going to rattle through some tests, see what we've got, and we're going to talk about it, because that's what we need to know. I'm down on my miniature range with my miniature bow, wearing my tactical t-shirt, Todd's Workshop tactical t-shirt, how appropriate, you'll find them in the merch shelf. These balustrino, incredibly rare. There's only 18 or so of them in existence, but they all work pretty much the same way, even if they look quite different. That they've got a screw jack here and a tri trigger mechanism here that goes forward and then pulled back by the screw system. So I'll just slide that forward. Trigger's now in, just holding it closed. And then you just wind it up. Now, as I said, this is a 200 pound draw weight. So, you know, it's, um, it's hard work, you know, to do it again and again and again. And it's not particularly fast. So you'd wonder that if you're an assassin, you wanted a second shot, you'd have to ask your target to hang out and just hold on for a minute. But here we go, five meters distant, pork joint. Let's see what happens. I completely missed. Right, so there might be a few of these because this is not the easiest thing to target. Oh, lovely, lovely. So that was nice. Right, let's go look at that one. Right, so scaling off here. Just measuring against another bolt, so that much. So what's that, 55, 60 millimeters, so two and a half inches has gone into the flesh there uh, at a five meter range. Nice. Ready to go again at five meters. Oh, completely missed again. Right, try again. The nature of how this shoots makes it all a little bit cranky. It's not, it's not like a pistol. Which, of course, bear in mind, they could have used the pistol. There were plenty around at the time. Nice ones like wheel locks, too. Oh, oh. Well, I killed the target, but that's not what I wanted. I'm going to give it another go, but luckily my victim has obligingly decided to stand still while I reload and go again. Oh. Mm. Right, one more, one more. No! Oh. Really annoyingly in this test, I only managed to get one on target, but you know, that's a story in its own right. However, these ones here into a wooden door and they are, they're in, you know, they're in enough that I would not want to get shot by one. But again, interestingly, these are, oh, they go at about 44 meters a second, so 150 feet per second, something like that. And they are in fact, 6.7 joules in energy, which is half of that of a paintball gun, for those of you who know. So really, there's not a lot of energy in this thing, but it's a 200 pound bow. Maybe I'm lying. I'll put a little film right at the end of me weighing this very bow, and you can see for yourselves. Next up, can our assassin's crossbow shoot through clothing and into the flesh beneath? Because of course, you're not guaranteed to hit something exposed. I have a Tudor jacket out there, wool and linen. Let's try that. Oh, nice. So that's definitely in. And against all the odds, I may have hit the pork again, actually. Last up onto the clothes again. Right. Let's go have a look. 
Now here's the top one, just went into the foam. And so we've got uh, 45 millimeters sticking out the back, so inch and three quarters. And then the other one here actually missed the pork, in fact, which is a shame, but it's acting like a brooch here. So it's gone through three layers of this. So yes, it is going to go into somebody who is wearing a jacket like this. We're now gonna test this for distance. I don't mean ultimate distance because it's, it's not a sniper rifle. You saw the accuracy, you know, is gonna let it down, but what's its effective distance? So I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna shoot it from a distance against this wooden wall, and then I'll shoot again next to it. Now that's interesting because originally the one that I loosely based this on is from the Royal Armouries and their information card says their one can shoot 300 meters. Well, let's find out, see what we do. I'm out at 30 meters. I'm gonna see if it can penetrate that wooden wall at all. In fact, I'm gonna see if I can hit the wall at all. Hmm. Oh, I did hit it, but it bounced out. Gonna go for a second shot, see if we can get it to stick in. Oh, just got my roof. I've come down to 20 meters. Let's see how it does. Lovely, and it's in, it's in. And at last, a good shot. I'm gonna do a comparison test now at obviously a very close range, point blank, but it's just to see, really get a feel for how much energy is being lost over that distance, over that 20 meters. Nice. This top one here was the one shot at distance. 23 millimeters of head is sticking out. And the one at point blank, 18 millimeters. So it's lost, you know, a considerable amount of the energy because of course the head is flaring out. So yes, it does lose energy very quickly. So 300 meters, not a chance. Back to answer our fundamental question about the Assassin's Crossbow. Is that actually what it was for? Can it kill? Well, we saw it go into flesh very well. We saw it go through the fabric uh, over flesh. At 20 meters, it was going quite deeply into wood. All of these things, and well, and it shot cleanly and well. All of these things say, yes, it could. With poison, it could. Its energy is very low. So the bolt itself, the seven gram bolt itself is not going to be the thing that kills somebody unless you've got an extraordinarily lucky shot. So that's not it, it's poison. But the question is, did they? Because you saw the accuracy problems that I was having. It's a really difficult thing to handle. The top trigger is not intuitive like a gun is. And talking of guns, they of course they had wheel locks at the time. They had wheel lock pistols, fantastic things that you could have concealed in your garments. You could pull them out, you can shoot there and then. These, yes you can have them concealed just like the, uh, the Leeds Armouries card says, the information card, you can have them in your clothes concealed, but they don't have a bolt clip. If you don't have a bolt clip, you have to pull it out, then put a bolt on and shoot. It doesn't say that to me. It doesn't say assassin because they knew about bolt clips. They could have put one on if they felt it needed it. And boy, would it need it. Another fantastic alternative to something like the Ballastrino is a lot cheaper. It's your dagger. So this here is a nice left-hand dagger, a main gauche available from toddcutler.com. It's absolutely dated, same kind of period as the Ballastrino. Every gentleman wore them, everybody at court had a dagger. It's cheap, it's untraceable, it's reusable. You don't have to wait to reload and shoot again. The blade is bigger, it does more damage. You could poison it if you want. Lots of other choices than this. So what is it? What is it? Because I don't believe that this is an assassin's bow. I believe more than I used to, but still not really convinced. I think it is just a grown-up's executive toy. It is a lovely gadget that you can impress your mates with, you can mess about after dinner. We have loved gadgets for probably as long as time, but look at this strong box from the same kind of period as these. The whole lock mechanism there is absolutely beautiful and it is showing off. It is not required. You know, we love to see this kind of stuff and we love to see gadgets like this. And I think this whole Doge banning these things, the Doge of Venice banning these things, is probably one of his drunken layabout son's friends shot the Doge in the bum one day or something like that, and wham, bam, these things get banned. I think that's what it was about. And it is, you know, it's fun. It's fun, you can put an apple at the end of the table, you can shoot them, when the servant comes in, you can shoot them too. How funny is that? It's not gonna kill anybody, and I think that's what it is. But like every cool gadget, you need to impress your friends with it. So let's strip this down and we'll have a look at the insides. Like every good assassin's gadget, you wanna be able to strip these down. So there's a keyhole here, holds a pin. 
tap that out. Out the screw comes, and then the whole mechanism will pop out. Pins come out, and there we have our trigger components. If you'd like to know more about how I made this, there is a thread on a fantastic chat room site called myarmory.com. I'll put a link in the notes. Go there and check it out. Check the whole site out. It is amazing. But if you do like what you see there, tip them a dollar, a euro, a pound, whatever. Keep that place going because we all need it. But also, don't forget to visit toddcutler.com to get fantastic knives and daggers like this main gauche here. But just as the final point then, let us put this to bed forever. Is this an assassin's bow? I'm going to definitively answer that. Yes. No. Maybe. See you next time. I have the balustrino bow at the front here. I have a crane scale and we're going to wind it up. I've got verniers here with the draw length marked on, all ready to go. So just winding up, showing in pounds now. Yeah, so it should be drawing, I think this bow about 195, which is about right. So if we do that into kilos, 90 kilos. So it's bang on 90 kilo draw weight.